Today I'm going to try something a little weird. We're not going to design for a specific tile type or card type. Uh, instead, we're going to try and do some custom components. Uh, so the Game Crafter allows for uploading uh, custom punch outs where you would upload the design that you want it to print and then also a shape where you would cut that. And uh, that's what I want to try and do in Component Studio today. So if we look at uh, this file here, this is the cutting pattern that we're going to use. This tile was actually divided into two segments, so there will be kind of a top area up here and then a bottom area down here. For the purposes of gameplay, it'll be divided into two. It'll actually still be one tile as far as cutting. That's why there's not a cut line down the middle. We want to design something along that pattern. Now you'll note that it goes which, every which way a little bit, and so this is going to be tricky. What I've done is I designed a data set that kind of mimics that. So I have A1 and A2, so that'll be the top and bottom of the first tile. B1, B2, the top and bottom of the second one. C1 and C2 will be the top and bottom of the third tile. So this is our component data set. Now, if we go into designs, we'll actually try and build this. Episode 4, tiles. And what we want to go down to here is sets of small punch outs. I want to do a custom small punch out. Uh, I want to actually turn this. Uh, because these tiles are going to be written uh, horizontally, um, so if we look at the tile again, the, the text will actually be written from here to here and then you know keep going like that. So if I work with this horizontally that will make it a little easier. So I'm going to actually hit this uh, button here to turn it and so now uh, it will rotate that whole thing horizontal and make it easier for me to work on. Now we want to go add our background. So I'm going to hit add image uh, and we'll hit folders episode 4 tiles and throw our image in there. Now I need to rotate the image because we had it, uh, you know, we're rotating our tile here so it's not lined up the way it was supposed to be. Uh, so I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees and then we want uh, our image to actually be centered. So we're going to hit center max here, put that there, and center my here put that there. So now our image is actually in the center uh, where we're rendering it and so that'll be good. I also want to, uh, well let's call this a background and we'll minimize that. I'm gonna copy this and I'm just gonna replace the image in it. So this will be our overlay cutting pattern. Now, because we're not using a standard cutting pattern, I actually have to import the cutting pattern as an image. So I'm making, I made a PNG file here, and I'm just placing that in there. And I don't know if you can see that where it's being drawn in, but uh, let me let me turn off the top layer here, and then maybe you'll be able to see it. Now I'll turn on the background again, and uh, we'll do this. Oops, not that. This. And we've got our uh, backgrounds in place where we want them to be. Now, I want to do a similar thing on the back. I don't want to have to change my settings again. So I'm actually just going to hit this copy button here and copy that to the background and then copy this to the background. So now when I go over to back, I've got the exact same thing, except I want to put in different images here. So I'm going to choose a different image for here. We'll go to over here and I'm going to grab this darker one which is going to act like a fog of war so it'll be a little darker and then over here I need to rotate my cutting pattern so instead of having this first cutting pattern I'm going to do this cutting pattern because on the back it's going to be a different layout so you know when you flip something from one side to the other it's uh, the opposite direction so that's why I need a different cutting pattern. Now I need to make sure that I take these cutting patterns out when I'm finally ready to render this because they aren't going to, um, we don't want them to actually be printed onto our file. 
if we were using a normal cutting pattern, you know, that was just built into this overlay function up here, then it wouldn't get in there. But because we're doing something custom, we got to remember to turn these off. Anyway, let's go back over to our face here and try and add some text in and see what we can get. So I'm going to hit add text and I want to turn my text white here. So I'm just going to put that up there. And the other thing I want to do is I want to get it down to a size that is reasonable for this uh, application. So I'm going to go down to advanced and I'm going to turn on the outline area and we're going to start uh, resizing it a little bit and see if we can get it uh, to look decent for this application. I'm just going to guess at sizes here. I could have measured it in Illustrator to figure it out, but uh, nope, that's still a little off. So let's go here. Yeah, that's looking better. OK, so now I want to place this text up in this cutting area right here. I want to get it just laid right in there. So I'm going to uh, place it by moving this. I'm going to say 100 pixels. And I'm, again, I'm just guessing. Uh, we'll you know, have to play around with it a little bit and see where it goes. But you just start off with something and, and start seeing where it is. And if you don't like it, you can adjust it. That's the beautiful thing about Component Studio. So that looks pretty good. It's not fitting all of the text. So, you know, that part about it is bad. Uh, but I don't know if my variables will actually have text that's going to be that long. Also, we can shrink the font size and do some other things. So let's try putting in our variable now uh, for A1. We're just going to paste that in there instead of the text that comes with this. And that one at least fits. Now, what I can do to ensure that it's going to fit always is I hit this fit text to box button. And then that means that if it's not going to fit the box that we defined here, uh, we can add another, or I mean, it'll shrink the font down a little bit to make that text fit. Now, I'm thinking that I need to name this to the A1 slot. And we want to um, copy this over. So I'm going to minimize that, and I'm going to duplicate. And we want to do an A2 slot. I'm going to change this variable to A2. And this one doesn't have any text for A2. So let's see if we can find one that has some text for A2. Let's move this down a little bit so that we know that we're talking about the same thing. There we go. Now let's put it up a little bit closer to the line and maybe somewhere around there. And that's a little too close. Move her down a little bit. And now you can see that it's cutting, the red line is cutting into our text area. So the text is going to get cut off if we allow that. So we need to make our text box just a little bit smaller than it is. So I'm going to say that the width needs to be somewhere around 360 pixels. And that means we're going to want to move our position over by 20 pixels because we have 40 extra pixels. So we got to split that in half. There we go. Now the text area is still getting cut off there. So let's move this down uh, at, by the same amount again. We're going to go to 320. And this one will go to 140. All right, that's better. Now I'm not going to be worried about our text getting cut off. And again, we'll have our, we'll have our uh, fit text to box helping us out as far as getting everything where we need it to be. Uh, in you know fitting into the box now one thing about this is that I don't like the way this is left justified so I think we're gonna edit this to go centered and I think we're gonna go up here and center this one as well so now going forward all of our text is gonna be centered 
Now we need to do this same thing again, but we're going to put it over here. Uh, now this, this one is upside down from the last one. So we could take our text and rotate it and get it to figure out that way, or we can use this twirl function here. And what that's going to do is move or rotate the entire thing 180 degrees so that we can still work upright uh, for this other tile. So I'm going to go back to this first thing here. So now it's showing this one. And actually, let's see if we can find one that has, uh, has it on both. Artifact C should have it on both. There we go. Good. Now, let's, let's use twirl. So that's going to rotate the whole thing 180 degrees, which is fine. Uh, now, I want to duplicate the A1 slot. See, because we rotated the whole tile 180 degrees, but then we started doing this, it's putting it in the right side up for us. So now all we have to do, we're going to duplicate the A2 slot as well. Okay, so now what we need to do is just position those. So I'm going to move it over and try and get it into position where I want it to be. The, the height, or I'm sorry, the Y position on both of these should be exactly the same because we're in the same spot and I you know laid out the tiles so that they should be the same. But what we need to do is get our X values to position it where we need it to be. So let's just start by uh, taking A1 here and moving it over. Let's do something along the lines of 500. Not quite enough. Go 600. And that's not quite centered. So we'll go back to 580 here. And 590 looks like it's going to be about right. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So now that we know this is 590, we can copy that down here. And we'll have our position lined up with both of these things being right where we want them to be. <laughs> Except that we don't want them lined up, actually. We want them to be pushed off from each other. So if we go about back up here and look at our A1 and A2 slots, our A1 slot is at one uh, is at. Let's turn off this advanced menu. Our A1 slot is at position 100, and our A2 slot is at position uh, 140. So we need to move it over 40 pixels to get it where we want it to be. So I'm going to come back down here, uh, and we're going to add 40 pixels to this. So that'll put us at 630. All right, perfect. Now we've got our text where we need it to be there. We can twirl once more. And now our pieces are in place where we need them to be. We've got it rotated in the middle. So what we're going to do is actually take A1 and A2 again. And we're going to move them over here to the third spot. Uh, let's change these, though because this is going to start getting confusing that we have all these A1s and A2s and whatnot. So let's go rename this. It's B, B1 and there we go. Now we'll have some there and we'll come down here. Rotate so we don't have to do upside down math. Good. So now uh, we'll go back over here. Uh, we'll minimize that one and we'll minimize, well, not yet. Change this to B2. Now we'll minimize it. Rotate again. So we're no longer upside. Good. All right. So 
now we've got all of those pieces in place, what we can do is actually copy A1 and A2 again and put them over here. So I'm going to duplicate that, like so. Uh, and then I'm going to duplicate this one. And then we're going to come down here. We're going to change this one to be C1, C1. And change this one to be C2 and C2, like so. And then we want to position those uh, over a little bit. So we're going to get over here and set our position again. This time we'll go maybe something like 900. See where that puts us. Not quite far enough. Let's try 1200. Too far. Let's do something like 1050. Ten seventy five. Ten eighty. It's looking good. Okay. So we know from before that this one needs to be 40 pixels higher than the other one. So 1080 plus 40 gets us to 1120. Good. All that's left is to remove the outlines and the cut patterns, and this project is done. Thanks for watching.